You think it says something about some people who are not a conservative. You all know Matt Gates. You know it was personal. It had nothing to do about spending. It had nothing to do about everything he accused somebody of he was doing. It all was about getting attention from you. I mean, we're getting email fundraisers from him as he's doing it. Join in quickly. That's not governing. That's not becoming of a member of Congress. That was California Congressman, now former Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, yesterday after eight Republicans voted him out as Speaker. He's the first House leader in American history to have his gavel taken away. North Carolina Congressman Patrick McHenry is now the temporary House leader until there is another elected. Joining me right now is Virginia Congressman Ben Klein, a member of the Judiciary, Budget, and Appropriations Committees. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks very much for being here. Where are we on the search good. for a new Speaker? Good to be with you, Maria. Uh, well, there are going to be a lot of conversations going on today uh, in Washington and across the country as members go home. I wish we were staying here to elect a new speaker right now because time is short and we've got a lot on our plate. The American people sent us here to get things done. And, you know, we are driving, this Republican majority is driving down the field, to use a football analogy, just because the players want to switch the quarterback during the drive doesn't mean we can't stop driving to address things like the border, uh, the inflation rates, crime in our communities, all the different things that are challenging us right now, we can address. And we have a deep bench, as you said in your intro, and we'll get a new speaker here shortly that will help us address those. Well, why aren't you staying there to elect the new speaker? Uh, I don't know. Uh, McHenry is the speaker pro tempore. He made the decision to uh, send us home for the weekend. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, dissatisfaction with that. We would like to stay in Washington to make sure that we get it done because the continuing resolution that was adopted, vote for it, vote against it. I voted against it because I didn't want to see a continuation of the Pelosi policies, but it, it expires in about 42 days. And so we have got to get the job done. We've only done half of the appropriations bills, so we have to get the other half finished and across to the Senate and conferenced and sent to the president before yeah. the government comes up on this new deadline. Unbelievable. Congressman, I want to get to that and, and find out your thoughts on what needs to get done uh, in terms of the appropriations bills and what's most important here. But I want to start with your role on the Judiciary Committee. What does removing McCarthy as speaker mean for your investigations into the weaponization uh, of uh, the federal agencies and, of course, into the Biden uh, uh, influence peddling? schemes that we've been talking about every day. Are those investigations in jeopardy? Well, the information that I received in the conference meeting yesterday was that uh, committee activities can continue, but all floor activity stops. So we still have two bills in appropriations that have to get to the floor. Uh, apparently, we can work on those, but the bills that have been sent to the floor, energy and water and legislative branch appropriations were supposed to be on the floor this week. Uh, they are not. And because uh, the, the authority is so limited with Patrick McHenry, he can't uh, even put those on the schedule for consideration. So uh, most business has to stop until a new speaker is elected. And hopefully, we will have a new speaker that embraces these investigations and doesn't cut a deal with Democrats to stop them. You know, that's a fear is that there's a, a rump group of uh, disaffected moderates who decide they want to join Democrats in taking control. That would be unacceptable. Uh, the American people want Republicans in charge in the House and a majority of uh, of the conference is yeah. conservative, so we have to have conservative leadership in our conference. So what, what happened? Was it just that McCarthy had to keep the government running and had to work with Democrats to do that because he didn't have the votes on the, on the Republican side? Walk us through exactly how this happened. Well, there's been unhappiness building over the course of the summer about uh, our spending bills, the fact that they weren't moving fast enough, the fact that we needed this extra time to get the job done, and how we went about extending the fiscal year was a point of contention. And so uh, those eight who decided uh, to challenge the speaker essentially didn't support the continuing resolution, and for them it was a red line. Yeah. For some of us, we wanted to see how the rest of these appropriations bills went over the next 45 days before we made decisions about uh, leadership. But uh, uh, but for the eight, you know, it, 
they're part of the team and we're going to continue to move forward as a team and replacing the quarterback right now may be a challenge. It may look messy, but you know what? Democracy is messy, and we're going to get the job done. I just said that. Democracy is messy. I agree with that. Look, you just mentioned that the government is set to run out of money again in mid-November. You've got this 42 days now. You're a member of the Appropriations Committee. One question has to be is how come this wasn't done by September 30th? What happened that kept stopping these bills from coming to the floor and getting and, and getting marked up and and what's most important in terms of the remaining appropriations uh, bills that you need to get done you think you'll be able to address that in 42 days I, I think we can but we really have to focus you know Kevin McCarthy made a promise uh, at the beginning of his tenure back in January that we were going to get these 12 appropriations bills passed through the house in regular order um, and we needed extra time to get it done and and so to some including those eight that was not regular order but uh, the debt ceiling negotiations uh, really pushed the calendar forward uh, this summer we didn't uh, move as aggressively in July as we should have. I'll leave it to uh, leadership to decide why we didn't do that. We did. We went home for August break. Uh, we probably should have stayed to get the appropriations bills done. So there's a lot of hindsight uh, looking back at what could have been done differently. But we are where we are. We're going to move forward as a team, united to address these appropriations bills in the remaining days and avoid a shutdown here in October. Country, I mean, November. Look, let me just ask you real quick before you go. Who do you want to see as speaker? Well, fortunately, we have a great number of candidates, as you said. There are, the, the bench is deep, to use the football analogy. Uh, and Joe Concha gave us the visual of the day with uh, Donald Trump sitting behind Joe Biden. And uh, I, I chuckled when I heard that. So uh, uh, there are a lot of candidates that are going to be uh, discussed today and over the weekend. We hope to have one of those great leaders as our new speaker next week. Congressman, thank you. We'll be watching all of that. Ben Klein, good to see you, sir. Thank you so much.